Hello everybody, welcome to my book vlog and welcome back to sunny Spain. And the latest book I've read on my holiday is Slay in Your Lane, The Black Girl Bible by Yomi Adegoki and Elizabeth Uwe Benene. Now this book, I think only came out last month maybe, but I've had it on my radar for a while because this book was won through a publisher auction. I think between maybe seven, eight, even nine different publishers wanted to get hold of this book because this Black Girl Bible is a book that examines the challenges of being black, a black woman in the white spaces that define life in the United Kingdom. Firstly, I want to say how great it is to hear more black British voices, particularly when it comes to the black uh, experience. A lot of our literature and our culture can come directed from the state. So it's great to see publishers really wanting to publish more work from black British women. So great. The second point is, yes, I am aware I am probably not the obvious targeted demographic for this. However, I wanted to read this because frankly, if intersectionality is going to mean anything, then white women like myself need to listen more to black women when they speak about the challenges that they have operating in the spaces that I may take for granted. And in that case, this book was extremely revealing because Yomi and Elizabeth look at a whole different range of white spaces in the UK and challenge, um, explain the microaggressions and challenges that black women will face operating in those spaces. And that could be anything from university, dating, health and the uh, mental health as well, navigating the mental health um, side of our National Health Service. And also it looks at beauty, business, starting your own business, entrepreneurial skills, university, cosmetics. It, it really takes a lot of the key channels and looks at what the challenges are to be a black British woman in those spaces. And a lot of that, white people, particularly white women like myself, can be quite lazy about, oh, yes, I know that there's discrimination in the workplace. Yes, I know the gender pay gap is even worse for black women. Yes, I know that, etc., etc., etc. However, I actually found that by listening, I learned a lot more. And I particularly found this sort of uh, performative whiteness really fascinating, which I hadn't really taken for granted. So challenges such as language and behavior and how um, we all wear masks in the workplace, for example, but for black women, that mask also must become as a performing whiteness because in order to be accepted in white spaces or to succeed in white spaces, they have to sound and behave similar to white peers and cannot just be themselves in any way. I just found that very interesting. Um, and also I learned a lot about cosmetics. Um, I knew, for example, that relaxers weren't great for the hair, but I was shell-shocked to find that they also cause brain damage and can be seen as the source of many cancers that black British women have had over the years too. So one of the great benefits of this book is, yeah, obviously takes in a lot. But Yomi and Elizabeth have developed a really clever, smart, accessible way to navigate all these spaces. They've interviewed, must have been a couple of dozen, high profile black British women. And that can be across the business and culture from the likes of Denise Lewis, June Sarpong, Jamelia, Laura Mavula, Mavula um, Margaret Busby, I mean, yeah, the list just goes on and on and on. There was, there were so many of them and it was great to hear the experiences across the generations in all of these spaces and how a lot of the um, experiences became repetitive and across the generations and became uniform. Also, they've written this in very much a blog, easily accessible, YouTuber, booktuber <laughs> kind of way. So this isn't, one of the interesting comparisons that will be made with this book is with Rene Edo Lodge's Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People, uh, because that too was written by a black British woman and obviously that too was a phenomenal success. That Why I'm No Longer is not this book. So Why I'm No Longer is a very academic, critical, insightful, journalistic, high profile, cutting analysis of the black British experience and its exclusion in in white society. This is far more collegiate. This feels a lot more like older black British women putting their arm over the next generation, encouraging, gi giving them um, support and ideas. For example, when it talks about entrepreneurship, um, there's some so many links that are provided in this book where young black British women can go to for advice and financial support where they're starting their new ideas. It also talks about 
healthcare, not necessarily from an academic point of view, but what black British women need to look out for. For example, they have far higher rates of breast cancer than white women do, and therefore the importance of continually going for mammograms. So this is very much a self, this feels, just to call it a self-help book almost sounds condescending, but this is very much a support how-to guide. Uh, so in that I found it, I just found it fascinating, and I can see why it's been such a sensation already uh, with young black British women. However, it's also worth noting this isn't necessarily a criticism of the book, but it's a caveat. This book is 350 pages, it's a great length, it's snappy, but at that length it cannot be every book to every person. So for example, the dating section is very much a cisgendered, heteronormative, heterosexual look on dating. So if that is not your sexuality or your gender identity in any way, then that's not going to read much to you. There's also great sections on university and surviving graduate life. For some black British women, that is great. For some others, that won't necessarily be relevant. However, the lessons in all of those are applicable, particularly, for example, in the dating. Uh, there's some great uh, pieces looking at the behavior of white men and black men and the fetishization of black women and the use of the term exotic and the problematic areas around uh, about male behavior with women, whether or not it's necessarily going to be reciprocated or not. So that, well, that was fascinating. Also, uh, the experiences at graduates at university, even though all the uh, black women reading this may not necessarily want to go to university or have an interest in doing so, it teaches a lot about how the experiences are formed at a very young age. And what I found very interesting about the chapter in university is how colorism develops within the black community itself on criticizing each other uh, because of uh, perceived ghetto or ratchet behavior that somehow brings, brings the side down. Um, and I found that challenge within the black community very interesting as well. Like I said, I'm a white, oh, you can see I've got low power. Still, still going. So I'll wrap this up. I found this fascinating, easy to read. I am a white woman just listening. How a black woman would feel like this about the practicalities of their help, I can't possibly say. I'm not that right person to say. But as a white woman listening, I found this informative and really important that I take into account all the things that I've heard and be more under be more understanding and also be more aware and more proactive in being supportive. And if that's what I take away from it, then that's a good thing. Slay in your lane is another great sign of black British women making waves in the publishing industry and that is fantastic. And it's also another book that is superb, easy to read and is gonna make a great addition to a lot of people's lives. Slay in your lane, the Black Girl Bible. <laughs>